Hey guys, John Faulkner here with Firearms Depot, and today we're going to talk about a topic that I have been trying to accomplish perfection in. Uh, I don't know if we ever get there, but uh, trying to make a large frame pistol more comfortable as your CCW. Um, you know, this is something that years and years ago, you know, you had kind of pocket pistols and revolvers. Um, and then, you know, you had that like Glock 26 uh, kind of frame size that, that people carried. In the last couple of years, there's been the huge explosion of what most people would consider uh, CCW pistols, uh, micro compacts. I mean, there's been a ton of terms put out there with guns like the Glock 43, Glock 48, the SIG 365, the 365 XL, and, you know, the Smith & Wesson Shield, the list goes on and on. Pretty much every manufacturer has one, but there's still a, a place for carrying a full-size frame, you know, something like a you know, a Glock 19 or a Glock 17, uh, a full-size M&P, you know, or whatever brand you you choose to gravitate towards and uh, and how to make that more comfortable. Uh, because there's there's benefits to it, you know, they're for the most part still more controllable um, under a faster rate of fire. For the most part, they still can carry more magazine uh, or more rounds in the magazine, higher magazine capacity. And you know, the benefits go on and on. You're gonna find that a full-size frame uh, allows you the option of putting pretty much any light that you would want if you want a weapon-mounted light uh, on your gun. More options when it comes to optics on top. You're not stuck to just a micro dot, um, you know, like the RMRCC or some of the smaller hollow suns or SIG optics. Uh, you can gravitate towards a larger window, um, maybe more ruggedized uh, optic on a full-size frame. So, you know, there are benefits to carrying a full-size gun. Um, I think the biggest one is just the control that you can have over a full-size frame. I think it, it fits hands better, uh, especially for men uh, or men with larger hands. Uh, and, and I've just seen that in, in most examples that I've seen in classes and stuff, guys usually shoot larger frame guns um, easier than small frame guns. That's why you also go take a, a pistol class and you will not see a lot of people carrying 365s or Glock 43s. You're gonna see guys carrying Glock 19s, Glock 17s, MMPs, SIG 320s, and there's a reason. They shoot them better. So if you shoot a gun better, why wouldn't you carry it? The reason you don't carry it that much is because they're bigger, they're heavier, um, and we're trying to you know, fit that onto our waist, inside our waistband. So I thought I would go over some of the tips and tricks that have helped me over the years to be able to carry a full-size pistol um, and some of the gear that I, I bring along with it to, to make that work. So uh, for those that are wondering, I know you guys always wanna start with the gun first, so we'll, we'll do it to it. Uh, this is an MNP 2.0 that I've had done up by Agency Arms. It's got a single port uh, comp on the front of it an aim point uh, macro P2 on the top of it, a Surefire X300 Ultra, uh, this one has a turbo on it, X300 Turbo on the front of it. Uh, I have an emissary defense switch on the back side of it. I rock it with a 17 round flush fit magazine, and then I carry an additional mag in a Dynamis Alliance uh, magazine carrier that I've kind of changed the clip on and stuff to make it a little bit more comfortable. Uh, this one is carrying a Terran tactical base pad on the bottom of it so I can carry 22 rounds in in the extra mag as well. So on me, I have a full-size pistol with a red dot uh, with a weapon-mounted light and 39 rounds plus the one in the mag, so 40 rounds of ammunition on me at all times. So inside, what I'm carrying it in is a Veil Solution holster. I don't know if they're making these anymore. It's what I've carried for a long time, uh, a Veil Solutions holster. And everything that I carry, both of these sit appendix uh, in the front of my pants, and it's what I prefer. If you're not an appendix guy, if you're looking to wear, you know, three o'clock or four o'clock, uh, or if you're wrong-handed, you know, uh, you can wear it on your left side. All of these kind of tips and tricks are going to apply, but I choose to carry it in an appendix. Uh, I think when you start talking large frame guns, I think it's one of the best ways to conceal it because for the most part, we are wider this way than we are this way. Uh, I said for the most part. Um, you know, so it gives me more area in order to conceal 
uh, a full size frame and an extra magazine, so I choose appendix. Um, so, number one, you've decided to, to carry a full size uh, pistol, but it's just extremely uncomfortable and you feel like you are just showing that thing off, it's printing everywhere, um, and you feel like you're on display every time you try to carry it. Let's try to alleviate that. The first thing is you're gonna need a belt, and not just any belt. Uh, you're gonna want a stiffer belt. I know they can, for some people, they say it's like more uncomfortable, um, and I'm not saying you gotta go out there and, and get some like four layer bull belt with scuba webbing and Tegris and you know, that. You don't need to try to put a battle belt on every day when you walk out of the house. What you don't want are, are loose little stretchy belts like this. Uh, they have a place, you know, they work well, but what's going to happen is with, a, with a, a belt that has any type of real stretch to the front of it or is really flimsy is when your gun is positioned in your pant, it's gonna want to tip a little bit out. And when it starts to bow out a little bit, that's when you start seeing a lot of printing of maybe an optic, but especially the grip of the pistol. And that's all because the belt isn't stiff enough when it runs through uh, the belt loops in order to, to have enough rigidity to hold it nice and straight and real nice and tight to the body. So, you know, what I always tell people is you have to start with a good foundation and that foundation has to be a good belt. Uh, one of my favorites and something that I go to all the time is the Blue Alpha uh, Gear EDC belt. It's uber simple. Um, they're not expensive at all. And this one, I literally rocked this one, I think for like four or five years. Um, you know, when you wear the anodizing off of, off of EDC belts, it started to finally start to fray just a little bit. Um, but this, is, this belt literally has probably four or five years of, of carrying a full size frame in it every single day. Um, what I also tend to gravitate towards when you're talking about a full size pistol, as, as you'll notice uh, in this belt, is I don't like having belt buckles. Um, there's a time and a place for, for belts with Cobra buckles. Um, there's a time and a place for the uh, you know, belt buckles that you see quite often. This is a mean jean belt. Love this thing if you want to dress up. Uh, but when you hang a big belt buckle, like this Aegis belt buckle on the front of it, you're just adding like that much more thickness to already a, a wider pistol. Um, and that's where I think people start to, to notice even more printing on themselves is, you know, now you got this big belt buckle hanging out. Um, so I choose to go with belts like this Blue Alpha gear belt here, no belt buckle, simply just run it through the, uh, the little keeper at the front. This is an old school one, so it's metal. The new ones are actually plastic, and I think maybe a little bit better. Um, run it through and, and do that. Now I know there's gonna be guys out there that are like, oh, you can run the belt buckle to the side, and then it doesn't stick out as much. That's a solution to, to a problem I just don't think you really need, because now you have this like weird belt buckle to your side, which usually kind of digs into to my love handles. If you have to go to the bathroom, now you got this like weird belt thing that you gotta you know take off your belt buckle on the side and um, I think it's just easier to to go go this route um, what I also love about the the new blue alpha gear belts that have the plastic uh, keeper at the front here is you can walk right through TSA don't have to take your belt off or anything so if you travel a lot there's a little bonus tip for you there uh, but a stiff belt have to have a stiff belt and uh, you know tip number two I like belts without belt buckles. Um, so that's, that's the foundation. Um, let's talk about the holster itself. Over the last couple of years, every company kind of has their uh, version of what we consider wings or what we consider wedges. And you can find these at multiple places um, and you're going to have to find one that you think works well for you. Wings are what the belt passes over and then goes into your belt loops. And what this does is it adds a little bit of pressure when you tighten down your belt, cinch down your belt, that it catches the belt and the belt pulls the grip of the gun just ever so slightly into you a little bit because it protrudes out just a little bit more than the line in which they go through the clips. Um, as you can see here, I prefer leather loops 
it's your, it's, it's your choice. I mean, I have some right here. Uh, this is a T, uh, tier one concealment uh, holster here. It's got metal clips on it. Uh, this is a T-Rex arms uh, here with a sidecar that has plastic clips on it. And if you guys don't know, like these are literally all of my carry holsters. I, I have used all of these. Um, they all work well. Um, and it's kind of just, you know, what I'm, what I'm wanting to accomplish or what I'm trying to do for the day. But every single company kind of has their version of, of a wing and their version of, of a wedge. On the back of this tier one concealment, uh, they have their wide wedge. I have the wide one on there. And what the wedge does is it kind of works in the, um, in the opposite way that a wing does. So a wing is going to push the grip of the gun into you a little bit. The wedge is going to push the bottom of the holster out, which cants the back of the gun towards you. So what you're getting is it's bringing it in and it's bringing it back. And that also helps with the amount of what we'll call wobble or flop that you might get. Keeps it nice and tight to the body. Um, and you know, it just allows, I think, a little bit more concealability uh, with, with a large frame firearm like this. Because guys, at the end of the day, especially when you put a, an optic on your gun like this, you know, you're, you're starting to talk about you know, maybe a six to eight inch you know, uh, side to side measurement here. And you gotta figure out how to, to try to conceal it as, as best as possible. And uh, you know, like I said, pretty much every company that I can think of now kind of has their form of it. Um, most of these wedges and wings are adjustable. With like the tier one concealment ones, you add like stacker plates that allow you to adjust how much pressure it's putting on. Their wedges also come in a bunch of different sizes, so you can kind of modify and, and change. Um, there's also some of like these foam ones that you just put Velcro on the back of, of your holster. I don't utilize these very much. Um, but you can put Velcro on the back and it kind of allows you to, to place it wherever you want to that's the most comfortable. Because I think that's the biggest reason why more, more people don't carry a full size frame is they just don't feel like it's that comfortable for a prolonged period, you know, a day kind of period. And I'll tell you, um, I carry this gun here every single day. It goes with me. If I have to hop in the truck and drive 10 hours, uh, it's comfortable. You know, I make just a slight adjustment to it and I can ride in my truck all day long. It doesn't bother me. Um, and, but I've had to work to get to that level. It wasn't like day one, I put it, put it on my belt and I was like, oh man, this is, this is the most comfortable thing ever. It takes some time. And uh, you know, so, so these are kind of my, my tips that I can give you. Look for a holster company that you know, offers a wing. Uh, look to buy maybe some wedges for it. Uh, get, get a good set of, of clips uh, for the front of it or loops, whatever, whatever you prefer. Now let's go to some of the, of the tricks. And um, most of the tricks you cannot purchase with items. It kind of just comes down to figuring out what works best for you. Um, one of the, the biggest things is guys want to be able to carry an additional mag with their pistol. That's why companies like T-Rex Arms, they came out with the sidecar. Uh, every, everybody, you know, wanted to, to come up with this configuration. And it originally started with companies making a solid piece of Kydex. It didn't bend, it didn't form, and they were a little uncomfortable. You know, by the time you, you add a gun and an extra mag, um, you know, it was a big, big piece of plastic that you were shoving in your pants. And if it didn't, you know, mold just perfect to you, uh, you'd create hot spots. And that's what we tried to avoid. So what did companies start doing? They started making it to where there was some flexibility in the system. So with this tier one concealment, they use like a shock cord system, which allows this wing to kind of bend and, and uh, you know, just kind of conform to you a little bit more. Your belt kind of comes across here. So instead of being pushed out, it might come in a little bit. Um, with the T-Rex arms, they actually put it like on a hinge system, as you can see. So, I mean, it just, it kind of pivots and flows where, wherever, wherever your belt line goes. Hey, that kind of rhymes. Hey, look at that. Um, but, and this, and this can be changed out. They have like handcuff, uh, 
sidecars they have, tourniquet holders. Uh, I prefer to, to run my magazine up front. Um, but you know, this was kind of their solution to, to the issue of, of large holster and mags being uh, uncomfortable. I kind of went back to uh, what I would say is a little bit more simple of a system and you can, you can take it or leave it if you want to. Instead of having the two attached, which I think some people just like, I literally just use two separate components. This allows me to slide this away from my gun if I want to. Like if I wanted to run it way out here, I could. Where the T-Rex arms and, and other holsters, they're, they're attached. Where it is is where it is. Um, this allows me to separate them a little bit. Um, I always have a little bit of, of play in the screw of my uh, belt clip here. So what that allows me to do is, is I can cant my magazine however I want to. So, you know, I can cant it out, I can leave it straight up and down, but it gives me the most flexibility. And, you know, there's a time and a place where uh, you want everything to be, you know, a, a, a single unit kind of system. If you're saying like, hey, I want this on my nightstand, I wanna be able to grab one thing and put it on. Like, yeah, that's, that's the way to go. If you're looking for the most, I think the most um, comfortable version of that, I say separate the two and you can just run a single pistol carrier. Um, you know, like I said, this one is from Dynamis Alliance, but you know, if you have just a regular Kydex single pistol holder um, that you can put a belt clip on, there you go. So, you know, it's just trying to make the system work for you. And I tell, that pe I tell people that all the time, just because it works for me, doesn't mean it's gonna work for you. I'm 6'5", 200 and, uh, pounds. Um, if you're not, you know, you might say like, dude, I gotta keep it all together. Or, you, you know, if you weigh a buck 75 or a buck 50, um, you might say like, dude, this fits me perfect. Uh, the worst part of CCW and holsters is it usually takes trial and error in order to come up with the best system. But when you find it, you usually stick with it. I've been rocking this holster for quite a few years now. I even had to, to heat this one up because my original M&P 1.0 that I ran for quite a few years didn't have a comp on it. So I heated this up, sorry, Chris. I heated this one up and remolded it so that it fit with a comp on it. So tip number two is work on your mag, work on getting it comfortable. Um, and then, you know, another trick that I like to use or I, I try to tell people is you really got to work on your belt line. I find that if I actually bring my belt line up a little bit, uh, bring my pants up a little bit, most guys like if like, oh, I have a little bit of, you know, a little bit of love down here. Um, they think that if they get their, their grip below their belly fat, that it's going to be more comfortable. But what that does is it just puts it further and further. Uh, into your waistline, I think, down into your pants where it starts to hit into your pelvic region uh, a little bit more. Like when you sit down, it seems to get a little bit uncomfortable uh, if you're gonna get in a car. So, you know, what I usually find is, is if I can bring the whole, the whole holster up, including my belt, bring my whole up a little bit and get it to where uh, my belly button pretty much sits almost, um, probably at like the front of the grip. So I have, I have pretty much this much of the grip up in my stomach area. Number one, I think it creates a faster draw stroke because it's not like, I'm not trying to get my hands, you know, my fingers you know, down like into my pants pretty much in order to pull it up. It's a lot higher. Uh, I feel like it's a faster draw stroke. I also feel like, you know, uh, people that, that bring their gun up uh, I think it allows for a little bit more comfortable of a ride because it's more on your belly instead of on like your waistline and um, where you don't have a lot of fat, where you don't have a lot of cushion. So that's my, my tip number two to you guys is, is try to bring your, pant, your, your belt line up just a little bit. Uh, tip number three, when sitting down, usually under your shirt, you can just grab the grip of the gun and under your shirt, when you go to sit down, if you just slightly press out, just slightly press it out, just a little bit, and you can keep your hands on the gun, nobody sees a single thing. And when you sit down, uh, it, keeps, it keeps any belly fat. Listen, even if you're flat, like when you sit down, you still get a little bit of a roll. 
What it'll do is allow it to, to sit behind the gun and a lot more comfortable instead of bunching up or trying to roll over. And, uh, you know, it's one of those things that's funny. I, like I say, belly fat. Um, a lot of guys will tell me, like, I can't carry appendix because I'm too fat. And then literally the next guy says, I can't carry appendix because I'm too skinny. Um, anybody can carry appendix. You just have to, they just haven't made it comfortable for them yet. If appendix only worked for like 200 to 230 pound dudes, those are the only people that would do it. But I see literally guys that, you know, weigh 130. I see guys that weigh 330 and they all can appendix carry. It's just being able to make it comfortable. And that's what uh, I have put a lot of time into because, you know, rain or shine, uh, heat or cold, shorts, pants, it doesn't matter. This is the gun that, that I choose to carry because I have the most confidence in this. When I go take a pistol class, if I'm wearing something like a battle belt or whatever you wanna call it, duty belt, range belt, whatever, uh, I literally will take this pistol out of my appendix holster and I can stick it into my Safari Land holster, go to town. I have also ran this exact setup in Will Petty Vehicle CKB classes. I ran it at a tactical response fighting pistol one and two class. I've ran it at a green line tactical class um, and a kinetic consulting class uh, as an appendix trick. Ask the, ask the instructor, hey, can I run it this way? If they're confident in your skills and your abilities and are comfortable with you shooting you know, from a concealment, uh, this is literally the holster that I've done it with. So it's 100% doable, it's 100% functional, um, and, you know, and it adds the confidence that I know when I pull this pistol out, when I present it, uh, it's a gun that I have thousands of rounds through, thousands of draw strokes, dry firing uh, and live firing, and you know, that, that confidence is hopefully what is there if I ever needed to, to utilize this weapon. Um, in, in a CCW aspect. So, you know, that's, that's where I'm at, guys. Uh, these tips and tricks have helped me uh, over the years be able to carry this pistol right here. And I would love to hear yours. If you got more, feel free to leave them below. If you got any questions on appendix carry or something that I might not have gone over, feel free to leave those comments below also. We always stick around and try to answer as many as we can. And uh, I hope you guys got some information on this. And if you did, make sure you hit that like button, hit the subscribe button for more information just like this one. And until next time, be safe.